best as part of the use permit and affordable housing financing uh, community engagement process. And uh, in terms of the, the, the resident notification and tenant on-site relocation process, Jerry Lynch remains committed to the, the resident first approach. So all details about the relocation plan and the renovations impact on existing residents will be communicated to residents uh, early and often in a variety of ways. And per the county's relocation guidelines, Jerry Lynch will be required to complete a tenant relocation plan before any planned renovation work. Residents may need to be temporarily accommodated on the on the property while the work to renovate and upgrade their home is completed. And on-site relocation services will be provided by Jerry Lynch at no cost to the residents. And in all cases, the Gate Hudson property management team and the Jerry Lynch team will ensure information is shared with residents to give them time to fully prepare for any disruption, which includes 120 day notices. And they will also provide one on one attention to address specific resident requests and concerns. And so renovations um, for that initial renovation project would are expected to begin no sooner than January 2024, which is consistent with the timeline that was previously shared with residents. So I know I went through that kind of quickly, but to stay informed, visit the Arlington County website and search for Barcroft Apartments. And in the coming days, we will be updating the, that website with uh, the information presented today. <coughs> so thank you. And that concludes staff's presentation about the process update. And I can be available to answer any questions along with Mark McCulley and the Jerry Lynch team. Melissa, thank you for the presentation. Where do we stand with the master finance um, and development plan? So that is something that's being uh, currently worked on in a parallel process um, with this initial renovation project. So um, Jerry Lynch did submit their plan in October and now uh, county staff are in the process of uh, analyzing and reviewing uh, that that plan. Is that is that coming before the commission, the housing commission at some point or OK? Do you have an idea of when that would likely come before us? So I'll, I see Mark McCulley jumped on, so I'll, I'll let him as the uh, the coordinator for this aspect of the project. I'll I'll hand it over to you. Yeah, it's a it's a lot of complicated issues relative to land use and financing, but we do hope to uh, get that done by end of year. But I think it'll be we'll continue to update all stakeholders on how we're moving through that process throughout the year. Okay. Um. Will the units that are renovated, are any of those the units that we currently have residents um, who whose incomes are below 30% of AMI? Um, are, is, I think there's what, 200 or something units with residents uh, below that income threshold. Um, do we know if any of these renovations will impact those residents or if those are different? different um, so uh, in terms of exact numbers, I know that's something that we're working on, but uh, deepening affordability, I, I would anticipate that there would be some residents there, you know, at various income levels below 60% AMI. So deepening affordability um, for residents is something that that we're exploring. And again, could be through through units, through what we're, we call bricks and mortar units, um, and continuing to encourage housing grant and housing choice voucher referrals and looking at other subsidy options. Um, and I know brought this up before, um, and the county is looking at its overall approach to um, incentivizing additional tenant associations and resident councils. Um, but I think Barcroft, as the development process begins, and, and even before, really needs to have strong tenant representation from the residents themselves who are leading the, the effort um, either with support from county or Bugatta or, or you know, some sort of organization that can help them get organized. And um, but it, I think it's just really critical because this is a it's a huge amount of residents. It's a really big redevelopment effort um, that we have tenants who are uh, well organized and able to provide a clear voice for what they would like to see in the property and, and how they would like things um, to go because it directly impacts them. Um, 
I know there's already some advocate groups that are organizing the property, uh, but it would be really great to see the county come up with a specific sort of strategy or plan to make sure that um, residents across the property have an opportunity to participate and in whatever form it should take. Um, but yeah, again, I just strongly recommend the county look at um, figuring out everything that they can do to incentivize and encourage um, a strong and representative tenant association or resident council of the property. Um, yes, thank you for that comment. Um, uh, yes, there are uh, uh, advocate groups um, that we're in communication with, but understand um, the desire for uh, tenant for tenants um, voices to be heard. Any other questions or feedback? OK, uh, thank you. That, that was it, right, as far as the update? Or is there like a second part to that? I'm sorry, I don't think I quite heard you. Oh, sorry, I was just clarifying that that was it for the bar crop process update, right? Oh, yes, yes, okay. thank you, yes. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Melissa. Thank you, the rest of the staff and representatives from Chair Lynch. Next, we have development updates. So for development updates this evening, uh, <coughs> there are no big substantive updates to add uh, further than what has been sent out to the group previously and is on development updates handout. Um, I think really the, the only, um, you know, uh, business to handle would be um, really making sure that we have SPRC representation for the projects going forward. Um, I have heard from a number of people um, volunteering for um, different SPRCs, but um, I can send that uh, that chart around with all the meeting dates on it. Um, and if you're free, just let me know and I will add your name to it and um, make sure that you have the information for the meeting that night. Um, but other than that, I'm happy to answer any questions anyone has. Um, Alex, I think one of the things that in BBC and I had discussed around the SPRC was doing like a, whether it's a SharePoint site or like Google Drive or something that has all the SPRC, like what you sent out in an email, but it just has that up there with all the recent updates so that at any point in time, members of the commission could go and see like, okay, here's here's all the things, here's all the dates um, so that mm -hmm. it's just readily available because there's a lot um, yeah. and I think it's difficult for people to keep track of. Um, in general, I know staff was expressing concern that housing commission members weren't showing up to um, not like saying they were to attend and not show up, but just not signing up to attend the SPRC. And they are really our best opportunity to influence the process. Um, you know, we've had some discussion and provided feedback about how challenging it is to attend because you're signing up before you know any of the dates and you don't even know how many meetings there will be. Um, and the process is just not designed to accommodate our schedules. Um, <laughs> there's, you know, other key players that their schedules take precedence. So I get that it's really challenging, but it is really critical that we do have uh, housing commission representation in these meetings as much as we can. Um, it still doesn't solve the challenge of it's the commission doesn't get a chance to weigh in until after the fact. And as a representative, you're kind of on your own to provide your thoughts and feedback without being able to really consult um, the rest of the commission before you provide feedback. So it's definitely not like an ideal process um, from that stance or that regard. Um, so I think it's something that I'd like to continue having conversations with the Planning Commission and staff about ways that we can try to improve this and make it a little bit easier because it is pretty onerous. Um, but it also is really important and it does seem like that's our best opportunity to influence what happens um, as opposed to when they come here and it's too late. 
I have a question on that. When do you, when do we like talk about the meeting? Fortunately, I wasn't here last time, but I did go to the Wells Fargo Verizon meeting and it was a little overwhelming at first as it was my first one, but then um, it was fine. Do we, when, when do we discuss that? That's a good question. Is that development updates or is that subcommittee? So um, it, it probably is development updates. Okay. It, um, you, know, you have that discretion. Um, but yeah, um, SPRCs usually are set up. The first one they talk mostly about everything other than community benefits. So architecture, build form, stuff that's a little bit more outside the purview of the Housing Commission. And then in the second SPRC meeting, they usually go over community benefits. So what's who's getting what, parks, housing, um, transportation, um, things like that. So that's usually how it is broken down. So I could see how the, the first meeting would yeah, be I overwhelming mean, and somewhat technical. Yeah, which was fine. But then some of the things that I brought up, it goes back to the housing, of what we talked about, which was accessibility. Why is there only one entrance for residents? And like things like that, which from what I remember from this commission, we, we talk about that, you know, um, just equity, inclusion, and, and stuff like that, especially my case, Wells Fargo. Um, so it might have been a little overwhelming, but hopefully, because that architecture then goes into everything that they present here, where we're like, okay, well, we can't really say anything at, at that point. Um, Yes or no kind of stamp, but that's just, that was my question. I have my next one, uh, the 17th of April. Yes. For the Wells Fargo. I'm not actually seeing it. It must have been cut off. Okay. Because that last one is crystal. Yeah. I thought we had more people who signed up. Like, we do. Okay. So, uh, the, 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 um, I'm not sure. But I think it was in that PDF, this right? One has. Yeah, so the PDF was actually cut off a page early. So on my sheet, there's four more columns. One is the Wells Fargo Verizon, April 17th, uh, which Sarah has signed up for. Then there's Boston Holiday Inn on April 20th, which Laura has signed up for. And then there is Sunrise uh, South Glebe, April 24th, which Eric has signed up for. Um, and then there's a public facilities review committee, uh, which is kind of an ongoing one. But the, the three boxes that you guys are missing on that handout, sorry about that. But all three of those are being covered by housing commissioners already. And there's not a way for like when commissioners see this, you know, I feel like some people either live near there or know the area to send questions to the commissioner going or is that against like open meeting? Roles. They can do it individually. It just can't be like a group thing that people okay. are commenting on. But if you say, hey, everyone, if you have comments, send them to me. The challenge with that is, is everyone on the commission going to go through, read up all the documents, and then, you know, probably not because that's a lot of time. Um, so, I mean, we could, we could do that. We could send out an email. My guess is that we wouldn't get any. Okay. Well, yeah, I just want to make sure, like, I'm the only one there, and what if people had other questions or comments? But I, I understand that too. You could also have a SPRC subcommittee, right? Where those of us that could join could speak mm -hmm. without worrying about the open meetings rules. We could do an SPRC subcommittee, but I mean, it still has to be advertised as a public meeting. It would still, like, you know, it'd be another meeting that people would have to go to to talk about this. Yeah, I mean, maybe have to, but I kind of, you know, with Sarah, what she's saying is we never really have a time like to like talk amongst ourselves to say like, hey, how are you feeling about this? I'd love to hear your thoughts on this or like, what is your opinion on this? We never get like that type of dialogue because of the open meeting rules. But if we had a subcommittee that's announced and those that can make it, even if it's just two people, at least, you know, we could go deeper into the weeds before that person goes to the SPRC meeting. Yeah. Potentially, if the scheduling worked out so that they could do that, um, I think the challenge becomes like 
is the requirement going to be like that staff presents on what's going to be presented at the SBRC? Because a lot of it, you're learning what the project is at the yeah, meeting. Yeah. Um, and then you you don't necessarily come with a bunch of questions prepared. At least in my case, I had some. And then others came about because they mentioned things. And I was like, oh, what about this and that? Yeah. So what is like, I guess, you know, maybe we need to have a conversation with the county board. But when I think about public engagement, like we are bending ourselves over backwards and into a pretzel to be able to weigh in on these things that are really important. But the process that is currently established isn't really amenable for like public feedback. And uh, I know for myself, I don't really process stuff well in, on the spot. I like to look it over, review it, and kind of come prepared to meetings, but there doesn't really seem like there's an opportunity to do that. Am I misunderstanding that or? I think it would be really challenging to, but I do think we should look into this more and try to figure out how to make it better. I don't know what that looks like. Um, I've had I've had conversations with Eric Berkey mm -hmm. about it because this is something that you know he's had to deal with as well. I had conversations with Ann Benicia, um, with Planning Commission uh, Chair about it. So mm -hmm. it's it is onerous. I, something that Eric has brought up is that like DC doesn't do this process like this. Like they do just they send out surveys. They do like regular public engagement. Yeah. But then they don't have these SPRC meetings where representatives get together and you know get to like have a voice. Yeah. Um, so they kind of could just get rid of them in general and just say you know hey you either get involved in the public engagement or um, you know that's it. Um, yeah. If we as commissioners who are in a place of like great privilege to be able to come to these kind of meetings, be like more informed than the general public. If we're having this much trouble being able to move the needle like a millimeter, imagine like the general public, you know? And so, yeah, I know this is, I'm not like putting my anger towards you. I just think if we're having trouble as commissioners, you know, then certainly the general public is having issues too. Yeah, well, and that's that's where we're going back to the, the discussion at the beginning of the meeting with tenant representation, that right now there's really no process to have tenants who are directly impacted by projects have a seat at the table when it comes to this. There's an engagement process that staff follows, um, you know, surveys and they do like walkthroughs and things to attend, but um, there were a number of things that I talked about with planning commission leadership about um, you know, having maybe third party organizations involved uh, to work with the tenants and make sure that they understand. Because also, it's incredibly complicated stuff. You're talking about architectural designs, you're talking about massive, Setbacks, a lot of things that yeah. people yeah. have no idea what this is. At first, I was like, what? Like, okay, where am I starting? But like, I, I have some background of that, but like, the average person, you're just like, oh, great, oh, great, wait, okay, I can read that. Where am I? But then, you know, I'm kind of like, okay, I got my bearings. And then it was like, all right, I can contribute. Not as much as there were some people that can really contribute. Obviously, not how I'm commissioned. I was the only one, but I was like, oh, okay, okay. So, I think yeah. what also can be tough for the Housing Commission is uh, like, I was really interested in the housing pieces of it. Like, what, what is your plan? And at that stage of the process, they're like, we don't know. Here's all of our options. We haven't made any decisions about anything yet. Um, and I'm like, okay, I don't know how to weigh in on this because you don't know what you're going to do. So I'm not sure like exactly how to influence you on this. Um, I will say for the one that I attended, which is Wakefield Manor, um, one of the major concerns that I brought up is, uh, and this is down the street in North Courthouse Road, right at the corner of Route 50 and North Courthouse. Um, there's the garden style apartments there. And they have a parking lot, um, and that parking lot is going to be redeveloped into a high rise. And uh, so that basically they figured this out or did this deal so that they would keep the garden apartments, which are considered historical, in place. And those would be um, their market rate affordable. Um, and so those wouldn't be like torn down and redeveloped. But they said, OK, we'll, we'll do this parking lot. Um, one of the challenges from living there is currently residents don't have enough parking. Like there's not one spot for every unit. And they're going to eliminate quite a few spots by doing this. They're only going to give them like 30 spots after the new development's complete, like in the new garage, but there's currently like close to 50. Um, and they're taking away the street parking. I was like, so are residents aware, like who currently live there, that they're losing like 
almost half their parking spots. And the ones who have car, like what you're basically like, you have to move. Like there will be nowhere for you to park your car once this is done. Um, and if that's a problem, you're going to have to move uh, because I don't know what other solution there is. So that was a major concern that like you're eliminating a lot of existing parking for residents who, and there's already not enough spots. Like I would have to park this is in courthouse, like in Clarendon, like uh, you know, a mile or more away sometimes because yeah. they're just well, they don't want you to have a car, Kellen. Like that's exactly. I mean, but the uh, one thing I you know I, I know it's like wrap it up. Sometimes it also feels that these people that almost do not live in Arlington, have not really like done a survey of the parking situation, the transportation situation, and you're like, what? Like that's how I felt in this meeting with Fargo Verizon, there was like, let's keep a, a drive through bank ATM. Who's going to the bank nowadays like that? Like, everyone's on, I mean, I <laughs> uh, the one in Clarendon yeah. that just got robbed. I don't know. Yeah, like, really about that too. Like, that was good. I mean, <laughs> but it just, I mean, but those apart or that billing, they're not making a, making it for families, let's just put it that way. They're in Clarendon, well, I mean, Clarendon, what, what, um, Wilson Boulevard is all um, studios, one bedroom, two bedrooms. Behind that is families. And so, and if they're taking away parking, you're not going to have a car, then you're not going to do you do the drive through. And then it's just like, that's wasted space. I'm just like, yeah. what? Uh, There's no parking in Clarendon right now. I think one of the concerns with like, the car free diet too, I get from a cost perspective, much cheaper to have less parking, right? You can build more units, which we need. The problem is, I never drive my car, but I do need to drive my car sometimes. Like when I visit family out of state, which is like once a month, once every other, I need a car for that. So I need a place to park it for all the times I'm not using it. Um, so, you know, I can walk to most places that I go. So I'm, from an environmental standpoint, I have those benefits, but I still have to have a car for other things. Like when I do need to use it, and I think the challenge is when it's like we're just giving the parking because we don't want people to drive. Sure, I can walk, but there's going to be some things that I have to drive to, but that's a separate issue. Um, but I hear you, but yeah, so that was one of the major concerns that and for the new building that they were going to set up, they originally were thinking of doing like a kind of green space, like patio that was uh at grade. Um, and then in the revised design, now it's going to be elevated so only people in the new building can access it. The people that this is a great discussion. Imagine if we had a whole subcommittee where we could just talk right? about this stuff. <laughs> Imagine that. We could. I don't know how many people would show up. But yeah, so there were no, numerous concerns that were raised, by, not just by me, but other people. I know we've lost pretty much everyone. But, um, oh so yeah, that's what's happening with SBRC. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, sorry for this, the tangent, but I was like, so I think I think that is it for our meeting. Uh, we can adjourn. Thank you all for your patience and um, all your comments and questions. I think it was a good meeting. Um, Thank you. Um, and next meeting hopefully will be shorter. <laughs> nope. <laughs> well, don't say that. We've been under three years. <laughs>